Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I discuss flying an RC model airplane with two different types of wings. A wing with a normal airfoil and the same airplane with a flat airfoil. Let's get to it. Perfect. In an earlier video, I took basically this fuselage and I was interested in how RC model airplanes flew with completely flat airfoils. No dihedral, no airfoil, just a flat piece of foam board. So I made what I called the Light Flyer 1, put a card up here, a link in the description. Let's uh, go back and just take a look at what that airplane looked like. This is the original Light Flyer. It was a flat wing to save weight. I cut portions of the flat wing out and covered with saran wrap. The model had ailerons and flew very well. The Light Flyer 1 really flew very well. I mean, I was very surprised and I was intrigued with the flat wings. So what I want to do in this video, this um, experiment, is go ahead and take this same basic fuselage. We're going to convert it from band control with the ailerons that I had on the Light Flyer 1 because that was best for no dihedral. I've added um, a rudder instead of ailerons, and we're going to use two different wings, a airfoil wing and a flat wing. So let's go through some of the construction of that uh, rebuild of this airplane, come back and look at the uh, finished product themselves. I highly recommend that before any aircraft build of a kit or your own design, <coughs> connect all the electronics, make sure everything works. This is a very simple setup with rudder and elevator, two servos, electronic speed control. You can see the servos work there. There's just nothing complicated about this. And whatever direction we need to have, we can easily change on the transmitter. This is the original Light Flyer fuselage. I'm gonna to have to make some changes to adapt it to this uh, update for the rudder control, but there's plenty of room in the two inch wide fuselage. See the elevators in place. I'll have to cut the fin to have a rudder because there will be no ailerons to easily swap out the two wings. And you can see the radio equipment off to the left. These are the two millimeter carbon rods that will be reinforcing the uh, foam board wing structure. This is a view of the engine mounted in front. Uh, nothing special about that. <clears throat> Plenty of room for the wires. You can see the two servos hot glued onto the side for the elevator and rudder. Underneath in those compartment will be the receiver and electronic speed control. I'll cover that on the bottom, but that's what you see right there for the um, side. Velcro is always already in place for the battery on the side of the fuselage. A quick look at controls. You can see the elevator and rudder. There's way too much control. The long servo arms, I'll reduce that later on at the transmitter for, for more normal control throws. But everything works good. No binding with the control rods. Here's another view of everything in place. The uh, elevator and rudder servos, the motor with the prop, electronic speed control and the receiver in the nose compartment. We'll put some foam over that to keep things in place and then where the battery will be located in the fuselage. This is the construction of the airfoil wing. I've cut airfoils out of airfoil shape out of the foam. Uh, those are located here. Here are the five and a half inch cord wing panels, 15 inches each side, because there will be a dihedral break. There's a look at the flat wing, no dihedral, that was done prior to the airfoil shaped one. This is the flat wing with the carbon uh, rods put in place. This will be the airfoil wing uh, in construction. What I did was I um, pinned it or taped three of the fo uh, foam airfoil ribs to the building board. You can see the scores cut on top of the foam board. By cutting the top, you can see how easily it bends. And we just carefully hot glue that foam to the ribs on the building board for the completed wing half. So this is the complete uh, or the completed rebuild of the fuselage. It's a Park 250 motor. Again, all the specifics of the equipment will be in the description. And the wing is placed on top and there's no ailerons of the wings for simplicity between the two ailerons, thus the rudder. So everything is in the fuselage. In here, you saw during the construction, the electronic speed control. And the receiver is located in, in here. There's a servo. Uh, in this case, it's the elevator servo, the rudder servo. And the battery is all here. 
And notice I can, uh, as I put in the uh, components, I can see where the center of gravity was mapping out. I can move the battery back and forth to get the right center of gravity. Also, clearly I had to add dowels for the wing hold downs. I um, doubled them up with some foam board here, everything with a hot glue gun. There's a popsicle stick for the front of the wing leading edge. And notice that, that gives a little bit of a positive incidence from the back to the front, which is uh, necessary for the flat wing. I've never flown this airplane with a rudder, so we'll see if that works. In the test flights, the rudder, based on the earlier flight, should work and it balances out. So right now I'm going to put on the wing with the rubber bands. We'll come back and look at, the, um, uh, we'll look at it with the wing in place. So let's take a look at the two wings we'll be flying with this experiment. The first one is simply a flat wing. This is 3 16 inch foam board. It's 30 inch wingspan. That's the width of the foam board itself. My previous one had no dihedral whatsoever. You can see I added one half of an inch dihedral on this between the two tips. I did that because of the rudder control. Could it fly with a flat wing? Probably, but usually with a rudder, I think having just a small amount of dihedrals to uh, the benefit. The foam board is simply too weak by itself. I have to use the two millimeter carbon uh, rod that's located here. I use that for sure on the other one. I hot glue the carbon rod in place and then with some uh, a colored packing tape, use, um, kept it taped in place. Also, where the rods overlap because of the dihedral, I can't use the heat shrink tubing to hold them in place like on the flat wing. I just put some 5 minute epoxy to hold that in like that. This is just a little bit of a um, reinforcing uh, strip to the uh, connection point at the middle of the wing, and then popsicle sticks here to keep the rubber bands from digging into the foam. This is the foam uh, um, airfoil shaped wing. What I did was I just cut out a fairly exaggerated um, airfoil shape for slow feet, uh, speed flight. I have the ribs located here. And what I did was, as with other models where I curved the foam board, I just scored through the foam board halfway with an X-acto X -acto, X -acto knife and a straight edge, and that way you can kind of crack it at each of those cuts halfway down. It makes it very easy to bend over, as you saw in the construction um, uh, videos. You saw also how I uh, put the ribs down onto the building board, glued the wing in place. This is a center reinforcing strap, um, the popsicle sticks for the rubber band hold, uh, hold downs. And also I noticed with the, with the bent wing, it's a fairly rigid structure. So I have elected to save a little bit of weight not to put on the um, carbon fiber rods. I think the wing is strong enough for the type of flying I'll be doing. And just as a little bit of a last gasp uh, fail safe, I put in some tape here to hold everything together from it bending up. So I think this will be strong enough to um, fly with the airplane. So the idea is we'll be able to take the same airplane, do different, two different wings, and just see the differences in the flight characteristics between them. So now give me a moment. I'll um, put the wings in place with rubber bands. We'll power it up and we'll see how everything works. So we have the wing in place with the rubber bands. That fits in well. You can see the positive incidence from the uh, leading edge on that popsicle stick. I think that's necessary for this to fly. The battery is in place. So why don't we hook that up, being careful to observe the polarity. So there's up elevator, down elevator. I think that should be enough. Left and right for the rudder. Just very normal control rod runs there, nothing special. And the motor, I've got a 7 by 3.5 prop. I think this will have enough thrust. The model's full up weight with the battery is 5 ounces, so I think that'll be okay. So this is the finished model. The flat wing goes on just like this one. Um, I think we're all set to give it a try. We'll see what the weather is at the fly schedules, things of that nature, and I'll see you next at the RC field. We're out here at the field. It looks like a pretty nice day. We'll give uh, our two test flights with this um, uh, foam flyer with the, with the wings. I flipped a coin. I've decided to start with the flat wing first. You can see there's a slight amount of dihedral, one half inch, but we look on the edge. It's a completely flat wing with carbon uh, tube uh, strengthening for this. 
yellow is the flat wing and then we'll follow that up with the red one which is a wing again with a little bit of dihedral because of the rudder control and I put an airfoil on this just to see if there's a difference in the flying between the airfoil and the flat wing so wish me luck this is a no kidding made in flight of the flat wing version of this foam flyer. And I got to say the plane flew absolutely great. There was no elevator trim required at all or the rudder. This is just pretty much hands off flying. It turned well, engine had plenty of power. And again, there's absolutely no airfoil shape to this wing. It's just a flat piece of three 16th inch foam board and the plane handled absolutely great. Now you'll see here at the landing, it doesn't have a super high glide ratio, but under power, the plane flew absolutely fine. Perfect. This is a no kidding made in flight of the airfoil shaped wing. Um, again, this flew very well, but I will say that the flat wing flew a little bit better. Um, there was a pretty deep airfoil on this. It might have had some effect. It turned a little bit better, as you can see here, but um, there might have been a little bit more drag. The fact that it was open on the bottom, I uh, don't know, but in this case, a five ounce model, the flat wing actually flew a little bit better but it was still an interesting experiment to try with the airfoil shaped wing. Okay, so that was fun. You know, what's um, interesting, let me take off these sunglasses here. What I think was interesting, it actually flew a little bit better with a flat wing. Okay, so we were just discussing it after the two flights. Um, happily, there was plenty of power, but there was just a more consistent, smoother feel with the flat wing than the airfoil. Why is that? I don't exactly know. Now, we dinged a little bit when I took off the, uh, the wing here. But it's been pointed out, this is a fairly substantial airfoil shape. These airfoils do create drag, so there's a fair amount of drag from this wing, which is going to vary with the airspeed. I noticed when it was a little bit slower, it was a little bit harder to turn. Um, you have to keep the speed up. Also, the bottom is uncovered. There's going to be turbulent air going around, um, going around for that. But I think the takeaway, first of all, it flew okay without the carbon rod reinforcement here due to the curvature of the wing. But for smaller models, I think there is an argument that can be made that you can get away with a flat wing if it's fairly light. This model weighed five ounces. You saw the video, it flew exceptionally well with this flat wing, with three channels with the rudder. I just felt like I was in control the whole time. So again, plans are in the download. It's an easy model to build if you want to experiment, but I'm very happy with the way this came out and uh, good luck with your building efforts.